.NET user also says, logging everything is expensive, so when can we stop logging uh, everything and only log exceptions? Well, that is correct. Logging everything is expensive. I never mentioned to log everything. Um, what we need to do is to log enough information to be able to distinguish between normality and abnormality. And that does not mean to log everything. We should uh, um, identify those important events that um, help us to really understand if those use cases we implement are working correctly, uh, uh, working in, as normal, or something is going on. And only those should be, uh, should be logged. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you that sometimes you can, you can just drop logging and log only exceptions. No, you should log also normal behaviors uh, and, and not only exceptions, but of course, to the limit. Well, that definitely makes sense. Um, now, on, on the topic of uh, logging, just as we wait for um, additional questions to come on to uh, the chat, um, and, and you may have mentioned this in the video, but let's, uh, let's go in, into it anyway. What is the best way to capture those logs in such a way that they're not actually as expensive um, on, on the application? Is there a preferred storage method um, of, of writing those logs so that they're not interfering? ETW, Event Tracking for Windows, is a very efficient uh, um, logging mechanism. And um, I do recommend to use it uh, to log those important events um, and not to pay an expensive price. On the other hand, if you take uh, um, log for net um, using the file system, that is a really expensive mechanism. Another way to do it is using um, performance counters. Uh, .NET itself uses many performance counters to log its behavior. For example, memory performance counters, um, CPU performance counters, etc. You can do the same as exactly as uh, .NET and the operating system logs its, its behaviors to distinguish normality uh, between an abnormality. You can do the same using the operating system mechanism, ETW and performance counters. That totally makes sense. Um, and also, earlier on, you were talking about uh, cryptography and using different ciphers and, and different keys and stuff like that. Um, from just a, a question from me, what is the best way of selecting which one makes the most sense? I know there's different options in .NET, um, and each one has its pros and cons, but is there one that's generally better to use than others, or generally more secure, or maybe are they scenario-based, like there's one better for a certain scenario than another? Well, um, for uh, different problems, there are different algorithms, of course. And there are algorithms stronger than others. And of course, uh, the stronger the algorithm, the more expensive in performance it is. I can say that um, old algorithms like MD5 um, are not recommended to be used because these algorithms can easily be hacked. Um, and and um, you won't be get, um, implementing what you really want to get. So um, old algorithms like MD5, um, DES are, are not recommended. But triple DES, um, region DEL, um, AIS, uh, etc., are considered strong uh, algorithms. And you can look at um, the documentation in MSDN. Um, and this should be up to date with that documentation because uh, things change. The um, power of the attacker grow with time. And with that power, all the algorithms um, are deprecated. So you should be always um, online um, and, and read the MSDN documentation. And not only MSDN, OS, et cetera, um, read the documentation and figure out with which algorithms are are deprecated and are not recommended to be used. Currently, MD5, DES, don't use them. Uh, another thing that I can say, um, to encrypt data, to, to, um, to cipher data so um, other people will not be able to, do it, to, to, to see it, don't use asymmetric cryptography. It's not meant for that. Use symmetric uh, encryption. Uh, Asymmetric encryption is only there 
um, to exchange fee and, and to do um, uh, digital signatures. And fortunately, the API provided to us by .NET uh, enforces that. So uh, the API does not allow you to use the algorithm where you shouldn't use them. Um, so generally speaking, um, stronger algorithm will cost more. So uh, um, if you are willing to pay with performance, you can use stronger algorithms. Um, on the other hand, the algorithms that are deprecated don't use them, and you just have to be up to date. Perfect. Well, that's actually great advice. Thanks so much. Um, we do have another question for you in the chat here. The question is, um, what if we have an app already that we want to secure even more? How complex is it? Should we rewrite the whole thing? Um, or are there several steps we can take to apply security? You know, that is the common scenario. Most apps out there were not designed for security. And in most apps, some days somebody comes and say, hey, we need to secure the app. What do we do? So this is really the common scenario. And the best advice I would, I would give here, go and do threat modeling as if it is the, the first day of your, your design. Go and look at the app and um, look at its design and, and try to find those assets and threats and, and, and find out which threats um, pose the greatest risks to you. And on those spots, um, where those risks are rated as top priority, um, try to find those mitigation that, um, that uh, um, solves those particular, uh, particular problems. Um, it is sometimes impossible to secure the whole app. But using threat modeling, which will cost you nothing, it's just two or three days of, of um, talking, uh, a round table, all the de designer architect, uh, architects and developers they sit together and they look at the app, they think at, about the app. Uh, there's a security uh, uh, professional who will guide them and help them. You do this, this conversation, you do this talk, and you will find all those important, important threats um, that should be mitigated ASAP. Then uh, you can use tools. You can use uh, static analysis and dynamic analysis tools and then you will find more things that um, you might want to secure. There is a possibility that you won't be able to do that. There is a possibility that those changes are too expensive uh, to implement. But when you know that, when you know about those, those risks, when you know about those uh, security breaches, um, you can take the right decision. And it is uh, perfectly okay to say, we know that there is a problem here, the risk, is, is too small, uh, we're not doing anything. But at least we know that. So um, to summarize, go and do threat modeling. It will cost you almost nothing, but you will find all those risks, all those threats, and then you will be able to know what to mitigate and how. Perfect. That's actually great advice. Um, so it looks like we're actually just at uh, time for today. Thank you so much, Manu, for the session itself and answering those great questions. For those of you that are tuned in, um, check back in a, in a day or two to on.techdays.ca slash ARC380. Uh, make sure that you do use caps lock on those because it, they are case sensitive. Um, we'll have all of the information on there, um, the session as well as the uh, resources that Manu indicated um, during the talk. Um, and again, if you do happen to think of questions after um, today, after we get off uh, the show, by all means, post them in the uh, Tech Days LinkedIn group uh, or the Canadian Developer Connection group. Either way, uh, myself and Manu will monitor and we'll make sure that we get uh, those answers to you. So thanks very much for joining in. Don't forget the next Tech Days sessions are coming up on uh, March 13th and March 27th, so basically every other week. Uh, from now on. Um, some great topics coming up, so stay tuned to the uh, Canadian Developer Connection blog um, in case you don't know what those topics are. They are posted um, and we'll go from there. Uh, have yourselves a great rest of the day and uh, we'll see you in uh, two weeks.